a hologram of Rufus and it is the part from Excellent Adventure where he steps out of the phone box and he's like, greetings my excellent friends. Alright legends, welcome back to Here's Rodder's Reviews, the show that loves all things entertainment and shares that love of you. I'm your host, Rodney Stewart. We're getting into Bond, Ted, Face and Music right now. And i got to be honest guys, this movie here, I was dying to see it for so long. As I've said in the past couple of reviews of Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey. Two very satisfying films that I cannot pass up. I need to watch it. No doubt about it, they're on. Everything stops for those two movies. Although, Bogus Journey is not as strong as uh, Excellent Adventure. Uh, we have waited a long, long time, like uh, 20 odd years, for Face and Music to come out. And uh, I didn't actually get to see it until it was released on streaming in the UK, which took absolutely forever. And I uh, tried my best to avoid everything, any type of spoilers for the movie before I checked it out. Now, it was, it's was it been a few months since I watched the movie. And I have to say, the watchability of the first two, for me, and again, this stuff is completely subjective to the viewer. But for me, face and music just doesn't have that same watch rewatchability factor that the first two had. I have watched it once, and that is it. The movie itself, don't get me wrong, very enjoyable. It was great to jump on board with Bill and Ted again for a new adventure. And basically the ruler of the future tells them that they must compl- compose the song uh, before a certain date and time, or the world as we know it ends pretty much the, the entire universe. Time itself will cease to exist. That the song isn't created. So Bill and Ted come up with the bright idea of stealing the original phone booth that Rufus travelled back and during the first film to originally meet them and travel to the future to steal the song from their older selves. And while this is going on, their two daughters, the two teenage daughters, go on a time travelling journey through history to like in the first movie where Bill and Ted went around collecting historical figures to talk at the uh, history report. The daughters go looking for all these musical heroes from history to create a band to help their fathers in getting this song made before the whole universe and time basically ends. Um, for me, the best part of the movie was the little tribute we got to Rufus, of course. Rufus now is dead. Uh, I think it's been what? It's been about 10 years since he actually passed away in real life. So it was going to be one of these things where, you know, Rufus is a big part of the movie and you're kind of just, oh gosh, this film's not going to be as good without him being in it. But there's a, a nice little tribute whenever they come to the future and get the news they need to write this song. Uh, they, tr- they pass a phone box and there is a, a hologram of Rufus and it is the part from Excellent Adventure where he steps out of the phone box and he's like, greetings my excellent friends. And uh, it cuts the Bill and Ted looking at this hologram and you hear the voice of Rufus saying, you know, this was the, the phone box that I originally went back to meet the great ones. Um, for me... That was the biggest treat in this movie. Although the you know, Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves went back together in those roles. It was fantastic to see again. But uh for me it just as I said in I believe it was my review for Excellent Adventure, I did say that I believe that Bill and Ted are very, very much a product of their time. And for me, it just, it just didn't hit home in the same way that the the first two movies did. And 
like the, the comedy wasn't bad in this movie but there's no real laugh out loud moments for me um you know uh i'm actually gutted to be saying that about this movie because i've had such high hopes for it and that's probably that's probably the downfall for me right here that i did have such a high hope for this movie and you know probably you know it didn't matter what this film did i probably wasn't going to live up to the the whatever i had seen in my head for it but uh the film is good don't get me wrong the the daughters are absolutely brilliant in this movie and uh, the set pieces and visual effects in it they're you know so far beyond what the first two are but there's a lot of cgi going on there and there's that for me as good as cgi is there's just something about it that you know isn't as good as a proper practical effect and you know the first two movies just felt so much more real especially in bogus journey whenever they ended up in hell and met the devil and went through their own personal hells and whatnot it just you know it was solid you know what i mean it just it looked it was actually real you know it was just that that good but you know there's that kind of disconnect in this movie although it does look fantastic don't get me wrong looks amazing but uh, it's just probably a bit of the film snob coming out on me which i hate um the end to the movie itself where they do actually finally work out what's going on and uh for me that kind of derailed the movie for me a little bit because they discover by the end of the movie it's not actually bill and ted that write the song that saves the universe and aligns the planets and everything it's actually their daughters and for me it was kind of like you know everything that had set up in the first two for bill and ted and wild stallions been the the super group that saves the future like rufus comes back at the end of the first one and he's loved the future life he knows what's happened but he's saying to bill and ted you know this is you guys hands him a record for them to autograph at the end of the movie and you know whenever they start playing that song at the end of bogus journey he's just like yes here we go sort of a thing um the way in which the song happens at the end of it for me was kind of disappointing because uh even though it's the daughters that actually not write the song but they actually make it up as they go they're you know they're a product of modern day and they're they're good at sampling things that they enjoy so all these historical figures that are playing music the daughters are pretty much just listening for bits that they like and then they're feeding it through a mixer and whatnot and uh bill and ted jump into the phone box and hit this like what an infinity button or something it's called again literally only seen the movie once at this point and they end up being able to travel through the entirety of history while the song has been made up on the spot and they're able to feed what the song is throughout time itself and like everybody and every instant in history is playing this song at the exact same moment and that's what saves the universe and lines up the the planets and everything and uh, the movie kind of finishes there and there's a whole thing there too with the the princesses deciding that they're going to break up with Bill and Ted and then they'd clear off in a phone box to see the future that they're not happy with sort of thing but then they come back at the end of the movie and like you know we want to be with you sort of a thing for me now honestly <clears throat> the i just didn't feel that this film was quite as enjoyable as the first two that was a a tough bar to reach especially with the the, the cult following that bill and ted have you know from the first to the second movie like there's a lot of us guys that had grown up with it and you know i don't know it's just again they're a product of their time and i just don't feel that the characters worked out as well in present day as what they did back in the late 80s and early 90 whenever the first two movies came out absolutely got to say it but it's, it's it's a movie that was needed i'll say that much it's like this was the middle of lockdown and we needed something that was just light-hearted and fun to uh you know in a way we needed something to kind of 
possibly unite people in real life. And, you know, the idea of bringing Bill and Ted back, whose whole thing is to be excellent to each other and party on, dude. Uh, that's really the sort of message we needed in 2020. And, you know, the film has got a lot of pretty decent reviews online. I'm just looking at a few of them here right now. And, uh, you know, I'm seeing a 7 out of 10 on one review. Uh, 8 out of 10. Like, like a lot of the the critics really did love it. But uh, for me, just uh, it just didn't hit home. And I'm, I'm actually really, really glad to say it. But uh, that little tribute to George Carlin was really, really nice. Really, really. For as quick as it was, very, very emotional. Because the guy was an absolute legend. Like, I absolutely loved a lot of the stuff that he did in his career. And it was nice to see them giving him that little tribute in the film. It would have been easy just to gloss over the fact that George Carlin's Rufus had passed on and uh, leave it at that but they they give him that little moment in the light very very nice but uh, I am got it to say not the huge fan of this movie I probably will give it a few goes again the the humour that was in it just didn't hit as good as the first two did uh, for me I chuckled a few times uh, there's a sequence when they're trying to escape their future selves and they know that whatever they do, their future selves is going to remember them doing it. So they actually, Bill and Ted both put buckets over their head to try and sneak out of this house. And uh, as they know, if we can't remember, they won't remember sort of a thing. There's that robot from the future that comes back on a, a mission for from the future to kill Bill and Ted as well because there's there's two ways this prophecy can be talked about you know either Bill and Ted save the future or the future dies because of them so there's a, a plan to send this robot back to kill them because that could save the future as well so at one point everybody in the movie gets killed and ends up in hell we get to meet the Grim Reaper again we find out there was a huge argument in the past where they they split from where he split from Wild Stallions because he was a glory hog. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it was good to see him back. Played it well, but there just wasn't enough screen time for the Grim Reaper in this movie. Um, uh, yes, I'm going to leave it at that. I am actually gutted to do this to this movie. Uh, it had such, such high hopes for it, but... Uh, I think this is just the reality sinking in that, you know, I'm an 80s kid, <laughs> grew up in the, the 80s and the, the 90s, and uh, maybe I'm just not as in touch with the humour of today as I was back in the 80s and 90s, but uh, yes, this has ended off the the story of uh, Bill and Ted, and I just wish it had been a little bit more like the first two instead of what it actually was at the end there's a lot of uh, pandering going on in it as well and you a lot of uh, politically correct stuff going on in there and uh, yes kind of got it enjoyed the movie don't get me wrong I didn't think it was great wasn't a fan of it but I did enjoy watching it for that one time but for, for me out of all three of them, this is the only one that, uh, if I come across it on TV or something or streaming, it's not going to stop me in my tracks to sit down and watch it the way the first two did. And I'm uh, very, very sorry to say that. <laughs>